So this last section, I want to talk about the action steps that we need to be taking, that you need to be taking, and we're going to be providing um, kind of a cheat sheet in the show notes um, where we kind of outline all of these things, kind of an old way versus a new way. As we look at all diseases, there are only two categories. There are modifiable and non-modifiable. We've talked about this in a long um, in a lot of other content, modifiable are things that you can actually modify. Mm -hmm. They tend to be behaviors like, do you smoke? Do you have to high de blood pressure? Do you have diabetes or do you have obesity? And, and are your lipid numbers all wonky? Is your diet off? Is your sleep? Those are modifiable. Non-modifiable are your genetics, your family history. I'm a man. I'm 47. I can't change that. Mm -hmm. Those are non-modifiable. Those have to just be managed, but we have to know about them. And when you look at the old or defensive mindset, when it look when you look at modifiable risk factors, you basically, in, a, in, in the old way, we're forced to ignore borderline. Right. We normalize early disease, mm -hmm. which is very dangerous, mm -hmm. which is really the root of why we continue to have heart disease through the roof, is that we've normalized early disease, mm -hmm. Borderline is not a thing, folks. If you're borderline, you have early disease. Yeah. By definition. Um, and we, 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 so we normalize disease. We manage the disease rather than put forth effort to reverse it because that's where the incentivizations are. Mm -hmm. um, and then we just screen for symptoms. And if you don't have symptoms and we're normalizing early disease, then we carry on and everything looks fine. This is how, hey, did you hear about John? Yeah, I heard he had a big heart attack. Crazy thing is, the month before he went to his cardiologist, said he had a normal EKG and everything looked fine. How'd that happen? Mm -hmm. They weren't hunting. Right. In the new offensive mindset, the modifiable risk factors, as you've touched on, these disease spectrums. Where is your fasting insulin? Where is your fasting glucose? Let's do a glucose tolerance test. Let's see if we've got any evidence of insulin resistance that your body is not, your, your metabolic engines are not working uh, well, so that we can help support, reverse, optimize. We have to r r really understand the wearable tech. We love glucose monitors, mm -hmm. um, profound amount of information mm -hmm. that can give you feedback on behavior and what my diet does to my blood sugars and what my sleep does to my blood sugars. And when I exercise, when I like all of these things are super valuable, but they require an offensive mindset. So we, I would tell you that from a modifiable risk factor, the number one thing you can do is get your head around where you are on the insulin sensitivity spectrum. Mm -hmm. And the way we do that is we look, um, we can grab wearable tech, a constant glucose monitor. Uh, your annual blood work should, and besides the basic CBC, CMP, hemoglobin A1C, basic fasting lipid, we need to add your LDL particle number mm -hmm. or as an alternative, you can look at your APOB. We need to know how many particle numbers of LDL you have, not just how much they weigh. We need to look at something called an LP little a. Mm -hmm. This is a profound, very, very significant. We won't dive into the significance of it, but it's one of the most important tests that very few people are getting LP little a. Mm -hmm. You need to also be grabbing a fasting insulin, uh, potentially uh, a glucose tolerance test if, if you're really, really suspicious that there's um, some insulin resistance going on. And then what we have talked about in the past, an APOE genotype. Again, we won't dive into the, the significance of this, but we just, there'll be a cheat sheet or you can write this down, APOE as in echo. Mm -hmm. um, there is a particular type of, a genotype of APOE called type four that we're uniquely interested in because that is an inheritable risk factor for early cardiovascular disease. In the non-modifiable bucket, again, we've got things like age, gender, family history, genetics. We, we typically don't, in the old defensive way, it's kind of like, oh yeah, you're a man who's 55. Like, no, that, that, that's a real non-modifiable risk factor. And the older you get, age is the number one risk factor for heart disease. The older you get, the more likely you're gonna get this disease of humans called atherosclerosis. But we need to screen for early accelerators. But, you know, there's, we have a fair number of people that don't know their family history. Right. They're adopted. They're either adopted mm -hmm. or they have lost touch with their biologic parents. So it's really unclear. Mm -hmm. We're very clear on their modifiable risk factors. 
But thankfully, we've got things like the APOE genotype, and if you have the means, you can do a full genome sequencing at mm -hmm. this point. Now, it does take a couple thousand dollars, typically, to, to get the full genomic sequencing, but that might be a really good one-time investment for you to get a real clear understanding, not just on heart disease risk based on your genetics, but cancer and sensitivity to medications and you know, early dementia and all these mm -hmm. kind of things. These things exist, but we're always screening Mm -hmm. And we're always taking into consideration these non-modifiable because we're on offense. We understand that these things matter, especially if you can't do anything about them. Right. You really need to have eyes on the things you can't change. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and then we move into diagnostics. Um, so diagnostics on the old way, I've mentioned the blood work. I mean, basic, 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 you know, $50 worth of blood work. A yeah. CBC, a CMP, a hemoglobin A1C, and a basic fasting lipid panel. That's better than nothing. But you've got to be able to add the LDL particle number, the LP little a, the fasting insulin, the APOE genotype, and possibly some glucose tolerance testing. On the old way, from an imaging and testing, mm -hmm. you, you, there, there isn't even a recommendation for a baseline EKG. Right. <laughs> it just blows my mind. Blows my mind. We get them on all of our members. How, how you would not want to document the baseline rhythm of a human is beyond my comprehension. Mm -hmm. But nonetheless, if you're fortunate enough to have had a baseline EKG, that's really good. It's not really screening you for heart disease. It's just establishing a baseline. If you have symptoms or you're really, really high risk, but even without symptoms, you, you still may not even get a stress test. But, mm -hmm. but, but a stress test EKG, if you're super fortunate, that's what you've been getting in the old defensive mindset. In the new way, there are things that are far more advanced and far more accurate and far more um, meaningful. For example, a calcium score. Mm -hmm. How many lives have we saved oh. just getting a $100 mm -hmm. CAT scan? I mean, I can count them on both hands. <laughs> we go in there screening for heart disease and we end up finding aneurysms and tumors. And I mean, of course, you never want to find these things, mm -hmm. but like you would like to know early. Yeah. But a calcium score, everybody over 50 should be getting a baseline calcium score. We get them in, in patients in, our fo in their 40s mm -hmm. based on the risk factor. But this is something that you should get as a baseline and then serial every three, five, 10 years based on your score, your risk factor, et cetera. This is too easy. This is a layup mm -hmm. of something to do. I recently got one and it's 20 minutes. You're in yeah. and out. It's a low dose to radiation. I got one too. Very um, low dose radiation. I think radiation. it was 50 bucks here in Nashville. It's but measuring it was... the calcium burden. Yeah of your coronary arteries, which are the arteries that feed your heart. And it's not perfect, but it is way useful mm -hmm. when risk stratifying. If there's anything scary on the calcium score or your risk profile deems, there are new imaging, um, and we'll link to these, one called HeartFlow that we've been using mm -hmm. for quite some time. And this is a very, very fancy computer-generated algorithm um, where we upload some incredible CAT scan images to the cloud and the, the algorithm overlays and reads the flow of blood through your coronaries and assigns a numeric um, value to how much blood flow there is to tell you if there's any blockages that are of any clinical significance. This is really useful. Mm -hmm. It's like a virtual heart cath. That's amazing. Ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Now we've got an even newer technology. It's called Clearly, um, where it does something very similar to the heart flow, where it measures like a virtual cath, the you know, amount of blood flow, but it also tells you what the the makeup mm -hmm. of the heart plaque is, whether it's hard plaque or soft plaque. And hard plaque we know is much more stable, think concrete like a rock. It's unlikely to fracture, rupture, and cause problems. It's just a hard artery. Hard arteries usually don't cause problems. It's the swollen, inflamed, soft plaque mm -hmm. that is very metabolically active, very unstable, and high likelihood of rupturing mm -hmm. and creating a stroke, heart attack, blood clot, these kinds of things. And so you can have all of this data on the table with an offensive mindset looking out on the horizon to, I mean, again, nobody wants to find these things, but if you got it, mm -hmm. you wanna know early. Yeah. To make good decisions. Correct. <laughs> then you intervene. If you need a heart cath, you need a stent, maybe you need bypass. Don't wait until, well, poor Johnny, you know. Had we known last year, we could have gone in there and put a stent in mm -hmm. this thing that took his life. Yeah. 
or these three arteries were beyond repair, they needed to be bypassed. Let's go ahead and do that in advance. We can, it's just, it's a bespoke, more tailored approach. And we get to operate in this world that is lovely mm -hmm. and free of being bound by all of these rules. We just execute because our goals are aligned with our members. Yeah. If you don't have a practice like ours, you still have the power to ask for these things. Yeah. And you have a fair shot of at least getting them submitted to try to get paid for. But most of these things, with the exception of these fancy CAT scans, nothing in here is expensive. Right. We're talking 100 bucks, 200 bucks worth of labs. Mm -hmm. Not like, I mean, this is not, just ask for it. Yeah. Pay cash if they don't. Right. It's an investment in your future. So I know that was a brain dump of like tons of it things. It was great. But I think if you can listen to this again with the cheat sheet mm -hmm. in front of you, really overlay this with you. What are your modifiable? What are your non-modifiable? What have you been getting and what looks okay? And where are you missing? Where are the holes in your risk stratification? You really need to know with more precision what your risk is for this disease that is the number one killer mm -hmm. of humans. Yeah, we have to at this point take this extremely seriously. Unless you have no ambition of living a long time <laughs> right? or having a quality of life for the years that you do have. Mm -hmm. if, if, you, if you're not motivated, totally do you, that's fine. Yeah. But if you have ambition to play the second half of life beyond 50 at a high level mm -hmm. with high vitality, minimal disease, high quality of life, and you don't have heart disease risk reduction n way up at the tippy top, mm -hmm. good luck. Yeah. You will not win. You're likely not. I mean, some people can sprint across a highway and not get hit. Well, you know, we always hear about those 90-year-olds that smoked and drank and ate horribly and lived to be 90, and they're probably genetically disposed yeah. to do that, but it, not all of us are blessed in that way. <laughs> And so these are we outliers. Have to do this. Yeah. You know, every kid who wears a hoodie from Silicon Valley doesn't have the next billion dollar company. Right. <laughs> mm -hmm. However, several billion dollar companies have come from, <laughs> the, right. you know, that fit that kind of correlation. Mm -hmm. But when, when you play the, the laws of averages and you were talking about your life, mm -hmm. you want to go where the data is, where the science is, where the precision is to give yourself the best odds of success. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we talk a lot on our podcast about finding your person, finding your team. And this is one of one. If I could give any advice to anybody, mm -hmm. it's find your team that will help you obliterate or at least know your risk factors for this. Um, Amen. You know, if, if your primary care pushes back on ordering some of these blood tests, nine times out of 10, it's probably because they don't want to order them. Because or they're not familiar with them? Well, yes, or they just don't, won't know what to do with the results when they get mm -hmm. them back. So be your own hunter. Find somebody that knows about these things. Do do investigation if you have the, the means to switch physicians or find somebody. You know, some of these tests that we talk about need the specialist of cardiology. Mm -hmm. We have great ones here in Nashville that we lean on to help us with our members, but we had to find them. That's right. Moral of the story is find your team. Yeah. This is just one more example, and it just happens to be one of the top mm -hmm. one, two, or three subjects, you yeah. know, heart disease, cancer, dementia. Like, I. Those are like the three scariest things yeah. for anybody who wants to live a long time. This has got, you've got to have more clarity and certainty on what your risk is or isn't mm -hmm. as you march this thing out. Well, I hope this is useful. Um, I think we covered everything. I think we did. This was a good one. Any famous last words? You know, as we're talking, I just think of the last podcast with, because you brought up a, a great terminology of delaying rather than preventing. Mm -hmm. I always think, you know, we always get hammered from media about preventing heart disease. That's really unrealistic. We're yeah, and then when you end up with it, you feel like a failure. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's really about delaying it as much as possible. If I'm 90 and, and I die from heart disease, but I die quickly from it, I've won the game. You win. If I'm 50 and I'm it's brewing and I don't do anything about it, I'm losing. So 
for and by me, the way, every single 90 year old on the planet has atherosclerosis. Yeah. Zero exceptions. Right. Some of them have heart disease. Some of them don't. Mm-hmm. And it it matters. And, and if that doesn't make sense to you, go back to our last episode where we really dig into what that really means. Mm-hmm. This is just you want to be the 90 year old with atherosclerosis and no heart disease. Yeah. And I also want to thank you, you know, Dr. Wenzel, as my colleague and physician for digging into this. I mean, I didn't know. There, I, I wasn't taught anything about these things in school, and uh, if I did, I clearly forgot them. <laughs> but working here and, and having you really dig into the science, which, you know, so, some of the science is 15, 10, 15 years old, and it just gets looked over. Um, but when you put all the pieces together, you're impacting lives, and that's I'm grateful for that. Well, you're very, very welcome. Um, I just care. Yeah. You know, and um, I wasn't trained either. Mm-hmm. And my observation was that people kept getting sicker and sicker. And all I was doing was holding their hand as they got sicker. And I had to do something different. Mm-hmm. And there are a lot of physicians who share my conviction. Mm-hmm. I, I, I used to think I was alone in this. And in training, in a lot of ways, I was alone. But as I've been out on my own now, I'm starting to meet like-minded physicians who are going outside of the way the disease management sick care model to hunt for health for yeah. their for their patients and I, if you're listening to this and, and you're not convinced that you have the right team i i promise you wherever you are there are physicians in your market who care yeah and it may not be obvious and i wish it was better and i wish there was more of them and i wish there was an easy way to identify them and there may or may not be but ask, hunt, own your own health. Be the CEO of your health. Oh, amen. Right? Mm-hmm. It's not fair. I wish it was better. It's not ideal. But at the end of the day, this is the only lap around the track you mm-hmm. get. That's right. And if you're not convinced you have the right team, hunt Yeah. for them. 